When the day breaks, we meet the chicken who tried to cross the road and a pig who dealt with its repercussions. Hello, I am Rahul Dilip, an MDS animation student, who will be attempting to analyze this nine and a half minute animation film titled When the Day Breaks, directed by Wendy Tilby and Amanda Forbes, and produced by the National Film Board of Canada. It has won several awards and nominations in the year 2000. The Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival, Academy Award nomination, a Genie Award, and selections for the Annecy and Zagreb, along with multiple others. The film won critical acclaim for portraying subtle human emotions aided by humorous anthropomorphic characters and left us pondering on the fragility of life and the invisible thread of fate we share with our fellow beings. The film begins with an intuition. We enter into the life of two very different characters, Ruby the pig and Mr. Rooster, both of whom find reasons for making a trip to the grocery store. We follow Ruby as she trots happily through the street. She gets distracted by the fruits on display and crashes into Mr. Rooster, knocking over his supply of lemons, canned soup, fish and biscuits. A single lemon rolls away into the sewer hatch, which elicits a despising look from Mr. Rooster. Once inside the grocery store, Ruby hears tires screeching, followed by a crash. Mr. Rooster has met with an accident. Ruby is traumatized by the experience. A life is lost on the road, a lemon is lost in the sewer. She feels the gazes of people around her as the body is getting carried away. Ruby goes into a fever dream. Interspersed with the broken pieces of biscuits and the fallen artifacts, we see the rooster's life pass like a photograph on a mantelpiece. Ruby, shocked at this fever dream, runs away and locks herself up in her room. She boils a kettle of water and sits contemplating the ephemeral nature of life and seeks reassurance from the urban jungle in which she finds herself in. We then travel from the power cord of the kettle through a network composed of electric circuits, plumbing and radio waves, going through the subway and even the sewer finding the lost lemon. We finally reach Mr. Rooster's apartment through the lives of different people getting ready for the day. Ruby wakes up from her dream, pulls the plug from the kettle and we find ourselves in her room as she pours herself cereal and a cup of coffee. She opens the curtain welcoming the new morning. The film ends with a visibly changed Ruby. Study of Formalism In order to have a better understanding of the use of form in this predominantly visual narrative, a brief note on the technique of animation used would be helpful. In an interview with Lois Seiger, Amanda and Windy detailed the technique used for animation. The visuals were filmed on an HI-8, later transferred to VHS, and required frames were printed out, photocopied, and drawn over with oil pencil. The frames were so small, 4 by 5 inches, that often painted images could not be too detailed. An attempt to maintain consistency in the frame brought out a lively boiling effect and a flicker during the holes. The likable anthropomorphic characters defamiliarize us from the gloomy reality and provide a space to incorporate humor into the story, adding a lightness to a theme that is essentially dark. During the montage, we observe a deviation from the main art style when we travel through the wire and plumbing. We find a world stripped down to the abstraction of moving lines and shapes. The technique was visibly influenced the choice of composition and camera movements. This difficulty to, de to depict detail is the reason why we do not see any wide-angle shots. More focus is given to the emotions of the characters, as a result of close-ups giving us a feeling of seeing their lives unfold up close. In the dream sequence, we travel along with the camera materializing in and out of the electric wires and plumbing. As the viewer, we are getting a highly detailed view on everyday lives and on everyday objects, like the toaster and the kettle while the backgrounds and the landscape remain hazy and vague. Sound plays a crucial role in the film. The opening and ending songs written by Wendy and Amanda were instrumental in setting the contrasting moods. The sound is used to draw and misdirect the attention of the viewer. The audio used during the transition through the network gives a highly immersive experience to the viewer. The sound plays a major role in a film that is devoid of any dialogue. The color used for the cityscapes are all in shades of grey, giving off an air of despair. 
drawing a contrast to the unsaturated backgrounds are the most saturated colors used for ruby, Mr. Rooster and of course the vibrant yellow for the lemon. The falling lemon is often repeated to form associations to death of the rooster. The smoking chimneys, black dogs and white ambulance all symbolize death. At this juncture, let us make our transition into semiotic film analysis. Let us begin with the characters themselves, namely the rooster and the pig, two animals that have a meaning of their own outside the context of the movie. The rooster is diligent, calculated and organized, while Ruby is carefree and impulsive. We see Ruby happening upon the stale milk, while the rooster makes a shopping list, implying that he is planning ahead. It draws a parallel to the Disney animation of the wise little hen. The lemon is a repeated motif in the story, cut between the montage following the death. It hints at the unpredictability of life. Same as with the fish, which gets eaten by a black stray dog after the rooster's body is removed, suggesting that life moves on even after death. The images of a broken biscuit crumbs cross cut with the images of cells and bones give the impression of disintegration and decay. The fuming chimneys in the dark silhouette of the cityscape draws an image of death. Water and electricity conduits form the literal networks through which Ruby connects with the other city dwellers to seek reconciliation from her feelings. Ruby's emotional distress is a key part of the film in conveying its core theme. A psychoanalytical approach could help us get a better understanding of how the viewer and Ruby processes the information we observe. Freudian psychoanalysis considers three parts of the unconscious mind. The ID, the ego and the superego. The ID drives the instincts and desires. Superego operates at the conscious state and the ego mediates between them to comprehend reality. We can find the same pattern within Ruby from start to finish. At the beginning, Ruby is shown as impulsive and carefree. She sings, dances and finds pleasure in consuming food. Immediately after the accident, her mental struggle begins. She is either plagued by the superego which re with regards to guilt of her unknowing involvement in the death or by the sudden wake-up call she receives about the impermanence of being. Her torment manifests, manifests itself as a dream, depicting the life of Mr. Rooster. Once in the apartment, she shuts herself in. She withdraws in her room, trying to make sense of the world. This time around, she finds affirmation in a dream manifested by her ego, laying out the various ways in which our lives are connected together. At the end, she suppresses the trauma, as we can see a marked difference in the previously carefree Ruby. Nevertheless, she opens up her curtain and goes into the morning, realizing the value of every moment and, res and respecting the ephemeral nature of life. Analyzing the film from the point of view of the spectator as per Lacan's mirror theory, we find that we receive an extremely proximal view of the life of Ruby and Mr. Rooster. In the beginning, we literally encroach upon their lives through electric sockets, leaky plumbings, subway trains, sewers, and open window. The film offers the viewer an omnipotent gaze and the license to intrude on their lives, particularly the thoughts and emotions of Ruby with whom we identify and empathize most with. But does the fact that Ruby was the main focus of her story free her from the male gaze of cinema? In the film, Ruby has her own agency. Her actions are not motivated for visual pleasure. She is not portrayed as a spectacle. Rather, her story is what drives the narrative. Within the film, we see at least four instances where the male gaze is used implicitly in its design. We find men ogling at Ruby as she crosses the street. The rooster looks at her with contempt for bumping into him. The shopkeeper's unsettling look after the crash. The policeman's sideways glance during the removal of the body. In the first, we follow the eyes of the man as it follows Ruby. In the second, we find ourselves in the line of contempt from the rooster as he peers into the camera. In the third, we find the gaze of the shopkeeper accusing. And finally, in the fourth, a passing glance from the policeman evokes a sense of being trivial in the eyes of the law. The male gaze has been used in the movie purposefully in order to instill a sense of dread in Ruby. It would be safe to say that the same dread has translated into the audience as well. The film ends without clear resolution, but it prompts thoughts on what constitutes a human life. Like the rooster, it would be the sum total of all the memories, experiences and even the contents of the grocery bag. How he was connected and interwoven with the face of people around him. 
how life is fragile and insignificant and the realization of which can result in either regression or a new found love for life at the end of the day what really struck me as poetic was that this film was thought provoking and at the same time light hearted it was able to incite thoughts on existentialism through a silly question along the lines of why did the chicken cross the road